You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike, and this is a pen from Pen and Farina. This was loaned out for review by the nice folks at Kenro Industries, who are the Pen and Farina distributors these days. And this is the PF1 fountain pen in blue and silver. I picked this up at the DC Pen Show after having first seen it at the Raleigh Pen Show, and it is quite a fun pen. Probably one that I'll be uh, I'll be buying off of them uh, instead of giving back, because I just like it so much. So here you have PF1, Pen and Farina. You can see it is an interesting little triangular case like this, which opens flat, at least stays mostly flat. You can see there's a little inscription uh, or inscribed diagram of the pen on here. This is uh, obviously a rollerball or a ballpoint version, but uh, today we're definitely talking about fountain pens. Just two loops, it's kind of all there is. In the box, there's also a little booklet that has a little description of the PF1, uh, has some limited warranty information, and how to put the converter in the pen. And that's kind of it. That's that's all they that's all they give you. Let's see. Can I fold this up with this inside? I can. All right, that'll make things easier. Pop that back in there, and away we go. This is the PF1. Uh, it has a pen and farina located here, just by this clip. You can see the clip is flush with the body here, and it is a triangular pen with sort of rounded edges uh, on it. One side is a little bit more acute than the others. And you also have a little blue button down here on the uh, the bottom finial area to match the top finial, which says, uh, just has the F, the pen of Farina F inscribed. And that's really all that's going on on the outside of this pen. It has a, uh, a flush cap and body uh, design, which means there will be a step on the inside where you put your fingers, and that's totally fine. The clip here is very interesting because I tend to carry my pens in a case. When I carried this one around, I threw it in a little case, uh, so I didn't try to clip it too much. But if you want to clip it to things, you just rotate the clip around to the flat side here, and then you have a perfectly usable clip. It's uh, it's totally fine. Works as advertised. We'll clip onto things, including shirts and stuff, but only if it's quite thin. This is not... Uh, not a lot of room underneath this clip, and it's not super flexible, so you're probably not going to want to be putting it on too many shirts, but you can put it on a thin one or a pocket. Shirt pocket is good for that, with that thin uh, little bit of clearance there. All right. So, when we open up the pen and farina, <laughs> I really like playing with this clip. I play with this clip quite a lot, actually. It's just got a very smooth action. It feels nice. And I like that it goes down flush. It really keeps the lines together. So, this is a slip cap pen. You just kind of pop the cap off. When you put it back on, you want to match the sides up. That's kind of important. Otherwise, it just won't go on there. Uh, inside the cap, you can see there is a very nice little uh, inner liner sleeve, which looks to be a uh, hole. There aren't any holes in here. Just one cap sleeve or one uh, yeah, yeah, cap sleeve. And it works really well at keeping your pen writing. I haven't had any problems with this pen drying out, even though I've had it uh, inked up for, uh, I don't know, m most of a month now, I suppose, at this point. Uh, but uh, yeah, no problems with this thing drying out. I really enjoy that. Then you see here you have the grip, which is, has that blue anodization there, which I think is very nice. It looks good. It is shiny. It is a fingerprint magnet, and that is where you put your fingers, but it hasn't been an issue for me at all. The nibs on these, I'm not really sure who makes these. It, I don't think it says in any of the literature. It's just inscribed with that F there for Pen and Farina. As per usual, uh, does it have the nib size on it, actually? Oh, interesting. I hadn't noticed until now. Ah, there it is. It's on the feed. I hadn't even looked for it until just now, but the uh, the nib size is engraved on the feed, which is kind of uh, it's an interesting way to do it. Keeps the top a little bit cleaner, I suppose. You can see a little bit of nib creep here, but that's nothing to worry about. It happens. Now, you can see the sides of this section are a little bit angled because it is triangular to match the rest of the pen, although at a much... Uh, uh, lower degree, and uh, it's very comfortable to hold, actually. I was a little worried about this one being uh, just kind of too thin up here, but it's actually perfectly fine. The grip diameter here is a little bit difficult to, uh, <laughs> to deal with in terms of measurement because it is triangular. It's sort of hard to it's sort of hard to say what the grip diameter is, but uh, measuring from on the flat side, the widest to the narrowest part of flat side, you here you have uh, five to eight point six millimeters, which is pretty thin. But on a triangular pen like this, it actually works really well for me. I haven't had any problems writing with it, and I've liked it quite a lot. All right, opening this up, 
Just twist that there. You can see there is an O-ring down there to keep things snug and keep it from unscrewing itself and such. You've also got a standard international converter here, and this converter does screw into the section, which is a feature that I always appreciate. Uh, <laughs> It's just a little bit uh, a little bit classier, I think. And also it means your converter can't fall off. I've had some converters fall off of pens and they like fall off into the pen and then you have ink everywhere. And that's, I don't like that. So I'm glad that this screws in, makes it a nice tight connection and uh, you know, no worries there. This can of course also take standard international cartridges with no problem. The inside of the barrel here is, uh, you know, round, empty, not a lot to see there. All right. So to put it back together, you just put that there, and uh, voila, there you go. It does seem that these are single start threads because it always ends up lined up with that uh, that peak, or at least very close to lined up with that peak. So very very close there, and uh, that has been uh, that has been nice. So let's do a little writing sample, and then we'll look at it next to a bunch of other pens, and uh, I'll have some details posted at the end of the video for you to look at, you know, sizes and all that sort of thing. Okay, so this pen is the Pininfarina. P F one. And they spell that out, it's not a number. This is a medium nib. And it's a very nice medium nib. I haven't had any problems with it, uh, you know, hard starting or any of that. It seems like it's a pretty medium medium in terms of width uh, and flow. I have uh, not found it to be super wet or dry or anything like that. It's pretty much down the middle and that's kind of where you want it. This uh, ink right here is Diamine. Uh, Panda Piece. Uh, e P. Uh, we've got a little thing on the E. There we go. Panda piece, which is uh, spice bread, French spice bread, which is fun. And panda piece is just fun to say. But this is a very nice uh, sort of maroonish ink that hits a lot of sheen. Well, you see a green sheen popping up there, uh, just in your normal medium writing. And I've seen that on a lot of papers. So cool ink. Very cool pen. Let's look at it next to a bunch of other pens. I haven't had any writing problems at all, so if you're used to a pretty normal nib, uh, it's pretty good. It hasn't had any problems keeping up, even when scribbling very quickly. No problems at all. Uh, and once you figure out the cap thing, yeah, I've <laughs> I've handed this to people and they've tried to put the cap on like this. I'm like, what are you doing? Just you know, match them up and it'll be fine. I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna damage it by trying to do it this way. But uh, this is an aluminum body, so I guess if you jammed it on hard enough, you could mess that up, but you get used to putting that cap on very quickly, I find. Okay, let's look at this next to a bunch of other pens. Okay, so here it is next to a bunch of other pens. Uh, this pen is in a kind of a weird price point, and so I didn't try to match p price points at all. It comes in at 100 bu 180 bucks online. The ma manufacturer's suggested retail price is 225 on this PF1. Uh, so it's kind of in the middle between the you know one and 200 dollar pens at 180. That's a pretty solid price point. Not bad for a pen this stylish. You're really paying for style. Uh, and such here. So we have here the Diplomat Arrow, which is another fancy stylish pen. The Pen and Farina PF2, which I'll be reviewing uh, very shortly. Then we have here the Karandash 849 Fountain Pen, and uh, just for size comparisons and because most people have one, a Twisby Eco. So uh, these are all more or less in the same length category. And really, the pen that this reminds me of for some reason is the Karandash 849. For whatever reason, these pens really kind of like they've got the same kind of feel to them, uh, but I gotta say the PF1 is just a, it's a better pen all around. It's more comfortable to write with. I think the nib is more uh, more interesting, although I gotta say the nib style here looks better. And uh, just this one has a little bit more weight. This one feels like you're writing with nothing, even when it's full of ink. So uh, it's got a little bit of that sort of like heft and solidity that I think the 849 kind of misses. I will say also that you can post the 849 and you cannot post the PF1. So this one, when you post it, becomes this long baton. This one you, you don't post, but it's a perfectly good length, even for my larger hands. All right. Don't mind the, the bug bite. I got bitten the other night by something. Who knows what? Okay, let's take off the caps and see what we've got here in terms of sizes. 
All right, so as I mentioned, you cannot post the PF1, so I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to show posted links because you're going to write with these pens unposted likely anyway. We have here, again, Eco 849, PF2, PF1, and Arrow, and it's right in that same length range as all these pens. A little bit shorter than the Twisby and exactly the same pretty well as the, uh, the Arrow, despite the Arrow using a number six nib, while this one looks more like a number five of some kind. Like I said, I don't know really who makes these, and so it might not have a number like five or six or you know the, the pilot 15s and 10s or whatever it is but about the same length as the uh the Karandash and the arrow which is i think a very good writing length okay let me put these caps back on good uh so final analysis on this pen I really enjoy it, and I think I enjoy it enough to buy it from uh, from Kenro uh, after having used it for uh, a few weeks. It's been on my desk this whole time, and it's one of those pens I just keep reaching for. It's uh, got a great style. I love the color. The sort of iridescent blue on here makes me think of beetles or something. And you got the the uh, the like aircrafty uh, brushed aluminum stuff here, which I think is really nice. And um, yeah, I think it's a great pen, and I think you should probably check it out. If you're at a pen show and you have the ability to do that, um, go by the Kenro table, tell them I sent you, try out the PF1, uh, and you can find these at your favorite retailers right now for around 180 bucks online. So I will uh, see you all in the next video. Peace out.